Cations are positive ions, and some of them undergo hydrolysis when they are mixed with water. Here we'll examine these more closely. When discussing cations, it is best to start by learning which cations do not hydrolyze. Cations that do not hydrolyze are the ions of group 1, excluding hydrogen, and group 2, on the left side of the periodic table. These are the ions formed by the alkali metals and the alkaline earth metals. So these ions do not react with water and are always neutral in aqueous solutions. Because they have no acid or base reactions, they are called spectator ions. It's actually useful to memorize these as spectator ions, ions which do not undergo hydrolysis. Now that we've seen which cations do not hydrolyze, we'll now look at cations that do hydrolyze or undergo hydrolysis. In chemistry 12, the cations that are recognized as hydrolyzing are these four. The hexaqual iron ion, with the formula FeH2O6 3+, the hexaqual chromium ion, with the formula CrH2O6 3+, the hexaqual aluminum ion, with the formula AlH2O6 3+, and the ammonium ion with the formula NH4+. We'll take a closer look at these three ions, the ones whose names start with hexaaqual. Many of the cations in the middle section of the periodic table, as shown here, will undergo acid hydrolysis when added to water, producing hydronium ions. But in chemistry 12, we will not consider all of them. The three metallic ions that we will consider in CAM12 are the chromium-3 ion, the iron-3 ion, and the aluminum ion. Notice these all have positive three charges. You may remember from chemistry 11 that as we go across a period from left to right, positive ions tend to get smaller. So these three ions, which are near the center of the periodic table, have a large charge and a small size. Because they have a large charge concentrated into a small size, they have what is called a high charge density. This gives them a strong attraction for any negative charges that happen to be nearby. We'll have a closer look using the chromium-3 ion as an example. Just before we do that, we'll look at a water molecule. You may remember that there is an unequal sharing of valence electrons, with shared electrons closer to the oxygen atom than to the hydrogen atoms in a water molecule. This causes the hydrogen atoms to have a partial positive charge, shown by the Greek letter delta with a plus sign. And the oxygen atom has a partial negative charge, shown with a delta minus. In other words, water is a polar molecule, with a partial negative charge on the oxygen atom and partial positive charges on the hydrogen atom. We'll have a look at what happens to a chromium-3 ion when it is added to water. The Cr3 plus ion attracts the negative oxygen ends of six water molecules, forming this ion. Water molecules have a net charge of zero. So the plus three charge on the chromium can be considered as the net charge on the whole ion. So this ion consists of a chromium atom in the center, surrounded by six water molecules around the outside. The ion as a whole has a charge of 3 plus. The formula for this ion is Cr H2O in bracket 6 for the six H2Os. And the whole ion has a 3 plus charge, so 3 plus is written here. 
The name of the ion is hexa for the six, aqua for the water, and chromium for the CR. So the full name is the hexaaqual chromium ion. An ion composed of a central metal atom surrounded by a number of other groups weakly bonded to it is called a complex ion. Transition metals are found in the center section of the periodic table. Many of these tend to form complex ions. When the groups surrounding the central atom are all water molecules, a complex ion can also be called a hydrated ion. The system for naming complex ions uses aqua to represent a water molecule weakly bonded to a central atom. The process of a positive ion being surrounded by water molecules and forming a hydrated ion is called hydration. This is different than hydrolysis, which we'll look at soon. The equation we can use for the hydration of the chromium 3 ion is Cr3 plus plus 6H2O gives CrH2O6 3 plus. Notice the hexaqua chromium ion has 12 hydrogen atoms around the outside. This enables it to undergo acid hydrolysis. Remember this ion is dissolved in water. We'll draw one of the water molecules here. We'll consider a collision between this water molecule and the hexaqua chromium ion. This hydrogen atom will donate one of its shared electrons to the rest of the hexaqua chromium ion and change into an H plus ion or proton. Because the hexaqua chromium ion has gained an electron, its charge will now be one less positive, and it will change from 3 plus to 2 plus. This proton will now be transferred to the water molecule on the right, forming a hydronium ion. The positive charge on this proton can now be considered as a net positive charge on the whole hydronium ion. The hydronium ion will now move away from the complex ion. We'll now focus on what's left of this ion and have a look at its formula. We have one CR atom. Notice we have five complete water molecules left. So we write H2O in brackets 5. The water molecule that was here lost a hydrogen atom, so now it's just an OH group. We have one OH group, so we write OH in the formula. Even though there is only one OH, the system for writing formulas for complex ions still requires brackets around the OH. Finally, the whole ion has a net charge of 2 plus. So we write 2 plus here. So this is the final formula for the ion left when the hexaqua chromium ion donates a proton to a water molecule. This is the conjugate base of the hexaqua chromium ion. It is what remains when a hexaqua chromium ion loses a proton. Because it has five waters and one OH group, it is called the pentaqua hydroxo chromium ion. But don't worry, you won't be required to name this ion in Chem 12. So we can now write an equation which summarizes this process of hydrolysis. We write CrH2O6 3 plus plus water gives H3O plus plus CrH2O5 OH2 plus. In the equations in this video, we'll leave out the subscripts AQ and L for simplicity. 
Remember, the main thing that happens here is one proton from the hexaquachromium ion is transferred to a water molecule, forming a hydronium ion and the conjugate base of the hexaquachromium ion. Because the hexaquachromium ion is a cation, this is an example of cation hydrolysis. The species in this equation can be found on the acid table, here. Here is CrH2O6 3+, H+, is short for H3O+, and the conjugate base of hexaquachromium is here, CrH2O5OH2+. You can see that we can also use the table to write the hydrolysis equation for the hexaqua iron ion and the hexaqua aluminum ion. The hydrolysis equations for these three hydrated ions are all similar to each other. The fourth cation hydrolysis equation we can write using the table is the hydrolysis of the ammonium ion, NH4+. NH4+, plus water, gives H3O+, plus NH3. In chemistry 12, you're likely to see only these four cations undergoing hydrolysis. All of these hydrolysis reactions produce hydronium ions. So they are all examples of hydrolysis. And remember that group 1 and 2 cations do not undergo hydrolysis. They are spectator ions in acid-base chemistry. Mm -hmm.